Recording has started, everybody. Here we go. Today, we want to get into our next topic dealing with mechanics, and that topic is acceleration. When we first started talking about mechanics, we said there were three things, technically four things, that we wanted to know about this object, and that each of these questions, if we can answer these questions, we describe the motion of the object well. What was the first question that we wanted to know? Where? And we learned that where is called position, right? The second question we wanted to know was what? What is it doing now? And we learned the other day that that's called velocity. The third question is where we want to go today. What will the object be doing in the future? What's going to happen next? Because if we know where an object is, what it's doing now, and how it's changing, we can make an accurate prediction about what's going to happen next. The answer to that question is acceleration. Okay. By definition, acceleration measures the rate of change of an object's velocity. Acceleration measures the rate of change of an object's velocity. Based on that, I hope, because you know some of these things, you can sort of come up with a rough definition or e uh, equation for what acceleration looks like. How are we going to represent change in velocity? in our equation. Mathematically, how do we represent change in velocity? Final velocity minus initial velocity, or we summarize that with the what? With the delta, okay? If our definition of something includes rates, there is a factor that is built into that definition. And what factor is built into that definition if we talk about a rate? There's always a what factor in there, a time factor, okay? So when we talk about acceleration, the acceleration of an object is equal to the change in velocity over the time frame during which that, that change occurs. So delta V over delta T. <coughs> and Roberto, you kind of went there next. Like we can break that down a little bit farther and make it Vf minus Vi over Tf minus Ti. So the change in velocity, V final, velocity final minus velocity initial, over the time frame during which that change occurs. Good there? velocity. We're going to find that the actual unit on velocity is a descriptive unit as far as what velocity tells us, but writing it is somewhat complex. So let's get out of here just for a second. Let me go to here. Okay. We just established that acceleration was delta V over delta T, and that we calculate that with V final minus V initial, T final minus T initial. If we start looking at units, right, doing a unit analysis like we did before, okay, we learned that V gets measured in what unit? What's the unit on velocity? Meters per second minus initial velocity will also be measured in meters per second over time final, which gets measured in seconds, minus time initial, which also gets measured in seconds. Does that make sense? I'm just doing a unit analysis like we did at the beginning of the year. Regardless of what the numbers are on the top part of this equation, right? meters per second minus meters per second is going to end me up with meters per second on the, on the top of that fraction. Yes? Then, on the bottom of the 
this fraction, seconds minus seconds, once again, regardless of the numbers, is going to give me seconds on the bottom. Does that make sense? This is my unit for acceleration. Meters per second per second. If you go back and look at your definition, acceleration measures the rate of change of an object's velocity. Acceleration tells us acceleration tells us how much velocity changes in each second. Acceleration tells us how much velocity changes in each second. Good there? So going back to the unit, meters per second per second, right? if I give you an acceleration of, let's say, three meters per second per second, what am I telling you about that object or its motion? Emily, go ahead. It's changing three meters per second every second that goes by. Its velocity will change by three meters per second for every second that goes by. Is that good as far as that unit goes? Now, with that being said, you'll almost never see the unit for acceleration written this way. No books write it that way, because it's kind of hard to write it that way. It's descriptive about what it is, but writing it isn't really convenient. This is a complex fraction, so we simplify that complex fraction. Meters per second per second. We gotta try and get this all together. Bottom, you have seconds. If I multiply the bottom of this fraction by one over seconds, multiply it by the reciprocal, right? If I do that, this second and this second cancel. That's great. But if I multiply the bottom of the fraction by 1 over seconds, I've got to multiply the top of the fraction by 1 over seconds as well. Putting this all together, we end up with meters per second squared, which is generally how you see the unit for acceleration written. But keep in mind that meters over second squared is exactly the same thing as meters per second per second, just easier to write it down. Good there? Good so far. Okay. Let's do some conceptual things. Here's a picture of a ramp. And this ramp is a time-lapse photograph of the position of a ball as it rolls down the ramp. Each of these pictures each of these pictures, there, 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 they were taken one second after the previous picture. Does that make sense? So this is one second, this is one second, this is one second, this is one second. Okay? All right. This ball starts at rest up at the top, and I tilt the ramp in a way to give it an acceleration, let's say, of three meters per second squared. So the acceleration of this ball as it rolls down the ramp is three meters per second squared. It starts off with zero velocity. What's the velocity going to be right here? How fast will it be going one second after it starts rolling? Its velocity here will be 3 meters per second. Here's one second later. How fast is it going to be going here? Here it's going to be going 6 meters per second. 
One second later. Now it's going to be going how fast? If the acceleration is 3 meters per second, how much does the velocity change every second? Changes by 3. So how fast is it going to be going here? 9 meters per second. Here? 12. And then down at the bottom of the ramp? 15. Question. Question I want you guys to discuss with each other for 30 seconds. Here's an arrow from the starting point to the next one second later. We've established the fact that it goes from zero meters per second to three meters per second in the first second that it's rolling. Is that distance three meters? Does it roll three meters down the ramp during the first second? Talk to the people next to you. Discuss. Go. of 3 meters per second, I asked you, in the first second, does the ball roll 3 meters down the ramp? The correct answer is no. Okay. 3 meters per second means that it travels 3 meters every second, right? That's what a velocity of 3 meters per second means. But, has the ball been going meters per second the entire time. No, it doesn't get to three meters per second until the very end of this distance. It's been gradually building up to get to three meters per second. Does that make sense? So is this distance going to be more or less than three meters? It's going to be less than three meters because it never actually gets to 3 meters per second speed-wise until this point. You'll notice the velocities go up nice and even, right? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. But if you look at the distances, what do you keep seeing about the distance between those consecutive pictures? It keeps getting bigger because it's going faster. It just keeps increasing how fast it's going. So it keeps traveling a farther distance every second. Does that make sense? So keep that in mind. Acceleration tells us about how fast it's going or how much it's changing how fast it's going, not how far it's going. Good? We'll get into that a little bit more as we go, as we go into all right. Some things to keep in mind regarding acceleration. First, acceleration is defined as a change in velocity or the rate of change in velocity. There's one physical motion that we always think of as acceleration. And what is that? When something does what? When it speeds up. Right? And that is acceleration because it's a change in velocity. However, that's not the only motion that can be considered a change in velocity. What else could we consider a change in velocity? Okay. Slowing down is also acceleration. 
because it's a change in velocity. And then there's a third thing that fits the definition of a change in velocity. Changing direction is also a change in velocity. Remember, velocity is a vector quantity, meaning that it has magnitude and direction. It tells you how fast something is going, but also which way it's going. And even if you don't speed up or slow down, if you change directions, that's a change in velocity. That's acceleration. So if you're on like a merry-go-round or a carousel at an amusement park, right? And it speeds up and it gets you going like, you know, to the speed that you're supposed to be going. The whole time you are accelerating because you are constantly changing directions. Does that make sense? So three physical motions that are acceleration, speeding up, slowing down, changing direction. They're all acceleration. Different kinds of acceleration, but acceleration. Okay? Good there? All right. Let me show you a picture. Here's a picture of the beginning of a 100 meter dash. This is the beginning of the 100 meter dash. So let's take a look at the first 10 meters of that race. Okay? There, I'll do this for you. Alright. Here's the start. Here's 100 meters down the track. Okay. Here is my person. In the first 10 meters, what does this person do from like here to here? Physically, what do they do? Okay. Speed up and oop. speed up and move in this direction. Yes. Good there. Okay. So, during the first 10 meters of the race, assuming that our start line is the reference point and we're moving in the positive direction, okay? I'm going to put this up on the board. <coughs> Does that make sense? If it doesn't, raise your hand and don't be a chicken. That doesn't make sense, just raise your hand and we'll talk about it. Is that good? Okay. All right, Shay. You're not the only one, just so you know. <coughs> X represents position, right, if we're talking about on the X axis. So if we go back to our picture of them, of them running the race, right, we're going to call this our zero point, and that means here, and we're going to call this the positive direction. So that means here, that's positive 10 meters, right? So going back to this, the initial position was what? If we started at the reference point, that means my initial position was what? Zero. So positive 10 minus zero Right, or positive 10 is greater than 0, right? There's displacement, x final minus x initial, right? So if I have positive 10 minus 0, that turns out to be positive, right? I use displacement to calculate my velocity. So if displacement is positive, that means velocity is positive. Yes? We've already established the fact that at the beginning of the race, they speed up. So does it make sense that during this small portion of the beginning, V final is greater than V initial? Does that make sense? 
for that small portion at the beginning. Okay? If we go back to acceleration, our formula for acceleration, if V final is greater than V initial, what sign is this fraction going to turn out to have? If delta V is positive, right, can time, can time ever be negative? Can't, because it always runs forward. So that means our acceleration is also positive in this case. Good there? Okay. Now, let's do this. So, faster, 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 right here, 100 meter mark. Ideally, you're going as fast as you can at that point in time, yes? Okay. But, from there to there, 10 meters past the finish line, what do all the runners do in that 10 meters? Slow down. Right? Going back to that idea. That's the finish line. Pretend it's the same picture, but let's pretend that white line is the finish line now. Okay? 10 meters after crossing the finish line. Does that make sense? for the end of the race, right? Okay. The final position of that little section is going to be positive 110. Does that make sense? The initial position during that small portion at the end of the race was positive 100. Do you need the picture back up or are you... Are you um, okay. So that means if I do delta x, right, displacement, positive 110, minus positive 100 still gives me a positive number, right? So that means my velocity is still positive. Even though I'm slowing down, which way am I still going at the end of the race? You're still going in that direction. Remember we said that the sign and velocity gives you direction, okay? However, now, if we look at the velocities, right, what did we say physically happens during that time? Slow down. In that little section of the race, after the cross the finish line, the final velocity is less than the initial velocity. Yes? Give me something. I know it's hot. Right. Does that make sense? So if I do V final minus V initial, I get a negative number. What does that mean about my acceleration? It's a negative acceleration. Okay? Acceleration is a vector as well. It has positive or negative. But now, what does the positive or negative tell you about the motion? Whether it's doing what or whether it's doing what? Okay, go ahead. Whether it's speeding up or whether it's slowing down. Not necessarily which way it's going, but whether it's speeding up or slowing down. Good there? right here. Not sure what that red dot's all about, but all right. Oh, it's from the 
What can you tell me about the velocity in this picture right here? How would we describe the velocity? You can't really give me a number, but what we say about it. This is a constant velocity. Acceleration? No acceleration. Zero. Good there? Okay. Okay. What would you tell me about the velocity in this picture? It's changing. Let's deal with the direction first. Which way is it still going? Okay. Let's say it's going in the positive direction. Okay. What's happening to it in the positive direction? It's increasing in the positive direction. So velocity is increasing in the positive direction. And that means that the acceleration is positive. V final is greater than V initial. Yes? And then this picture, right? Similar to the end of the race. Velocity decreasing, but still in which direction? Still in the positive direction. That means my acceleration is negative. Good there? I think I know the answer to this question, but you ready to make ready to make it harder? I know. That's, that, that's what I feared the answer was. But right. So we gotta do one more picture here, then I show you a table, and then we're done. Okay? I know, I can tell. It's been a rough day, believe me. It's been a rough week being in this room. All right, so here's this picture. This picture that we established, this was my reference point, we were moving in the positive direction. Anybody see where I'm going with this? direction here? To the right, which we've called what? Negative. So this is a negative velocity. What's happening to that velocity in the negative direction? It's increasing in the negative direction. Good there? Okay. All right. In order to figure out what I'm going to tell you about acceleration, I'm going to go back to this formula. Okay? That's the formula I showed you very first, at the very beginning, right? Delta V over T. Here, if my velocity is increasing in the negative direction, let's throw in, let's throw a couple numbers out there, right? Let's say during this little chunk of time right here. This velocity was negative 4. This velocity was negative 5. That would make my acceleration equal to what? 1 meter per second squared. Okay. However, if I start plugging numbers into this formula right here, right? what's my final velocity during this little chunk right here? I already told you that my final velocity is going to be what? Negative 5. Minus my initial velocity for this little chunk, which I told you was what? Negative 4. And that all takes place over one second. If I do the math on the bottom here, negative 5 minus a negative 4. If I minus a negative number, what am I really doing? I'm adding, but I still end up with what down here? 
I still end up with negative 1. So my acceleration in this case is actually negative. Am I slowing down? Physically, I'm speeding up, even with a negative acceleration. But what can I say about my velocity here? It has what sign as well? It's negative as well. Okay? Does that make sense? So don't get caught into the trap of thinking that negative velocity is automatically slowing down. It depends on which way you're going. Which brings us to this handy chart. Nope, not that handy chart. This handy chart. Okay. You can physically tell what's going to happen to the motion of an object based on its velocity and its acceleration, at least from their signs. Okay. That picture we just looked at, when I was writing with the red numbers, we had a positive velocity and a positive acceleration. We said that was speeding up, and that was great. But I just showed you that if you have a negative velocity and a negative acceleration, that still is speeding up. As long as they're both the same, you get speeding up. But if one's positive and one's negative, it doesn't matter which one's positive or which one's negative. Physically, you're going to slow down. You might slow down while you're traveling to the left, or you might slow down while you're traveling to the right, but the signs have to be different. Okay? Good there? All right. That's probably way more than enough for today. Okay? It's supposed to cool down this weekend, everybody, so hopefully on Monday. Of course, all the windows will be closed all weekend in here, so... All the cooling down outside really won't do us much good. So we'll get back to it on Monday. Yep. Way to fight through it. Way to fight through it. Nope, those are yours to keep. Yeah, so keep in mind, these slides are available online, so you can go back and check them out. Uh, as long as the recording worked, I will post the recording so you can check that out if you need to. Um, we'll talk concepts, apply those concepts on Monday. He's staring at me. Oh, I know. I wanted, I wanted to give everybody a chance to finish copying this, then I'll stop it. Have a good weekend, everybody.